Okay, this is a Vince Marino Plumbing LLC in Pittsburgh. Today is uh, November 24th, the day after Thanksgiving. I was here at this boiler several weeks ago. The main, the main issue was a uh, leaking radiator, which uh, I replaced the customer. We got the radiator. And uh, now, so I serviced this boiler and uh, upon finding a problem, it was looked at several times by other people, companies, plumbers, even people. Nobody seemed to be able to figure this out. No. I didn't abuse this boy or something else, did So we're gonna pull this out of here. Now this it's a standing pile of burnham. It is uh This is a P-2 double, excuse me, P-207-W. Now, this gas valve is a step open valve from minus 07 to 35. You cannot use a direct open gas valve on this border. Previous person installed a direct open honey wire, removed this, and installed this. This is the correct valve. This has to step open. You can use a uh, minus zero nine. This is a minus zero seven three five. And uh, we did a test here. Upon testing this, this boiler has an excessive draft, high draft. So we're we're going to modify this today. We're going to remove the draft hood. And connect this board directly to its vent because of the excess draft that's uh, going through this chimney and of course making the border unsafe and uh, inefficient now you can see here this board has been off for an hour this is a normal draft here so this should be down at zero For any of you technicians, heating contractors, in, uh, out of state, in, in Pennsylvania, out of state, you're doing these combustion tests, referring to the protocol slogan of National Comfort Institute. If you're t uh, not testing, you're guessing. You're doing the combustion test inaccurately. Okay? Anybody, you know, if you have any questions, call me, I'll tell you. Get yourself certified, then you can do what I'm doing. So this bore is an atmospheric bore. We have a draft already created here. There's an excessive air in this building. There's leakage. We can't find that. So what happens is when this bore comes on, I have my test over here, the carbon dioxide was raising because the air is going in there. So I taped this. You can see the tape on the floor. I had some over here to make this operable. I was able to come back. To uh, modify this. No. I heard this from another contractor in another state advising. If you're in the HVAC heating business or plumber and you think that you can't take this damper off to make this border safe, you're wrong. This is in a national fuel code, ANSI. To make a, a gas appliance atmospherically vented safe, you can put a barometric damper. It's for gas would be an MG-1 through fill control and two spill switches. I have other videos of this and I continue to post them because there were numerous companies here in Pittsburgh, this is in the South Hills of Pittsburgh, that worked in this boiler and didn't know what they were looking at. Particularly, this thermocouple is new. I cleaned this. 
the customer was replacing the thermocouple every two to four years. One, they had the powder too high. Two, they had excessive draft going through this board, so it was probably blow torching the uh, thermocouple. So as you can see, I'm putting my hand on this. So this is cool. It's been off, I'd say, for at least two hours. It's not even warm, except for the pilot. Okay, and there is a, a draft established. So if you're servicing boilers or water heaters commercially, I watched the video on YouTube where there was a commercial water heater in a restaurant. The guy had no knowledge, and he was a HVAC plumber, whatever. No knowledge why that water heater was backdrafting. Air flows in mysterious ways. It's not able to be seen. You have to use a, a draft gauge and an analyzer to properly determine if the appliance is drafting, combusting properly. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to take this... Uh, draft hood off set it to the side we're going to set it to the side quoting the instructor and we're going to connect this uh, flue directly to this boiler with a t and a gas mg1 7 inch barometric damper and add two spill switches which this doesn't even have any spill switches this boiler is from the very early 80s before i believe from what i was told by the rep burnham start issuing serial numbers they used to use a valve in here called Essex Essex made a step open valve this is a Honeywell so mainly for these P-20627 and I think 204 and they make a couple different ones whether it's spark or standing pilot you need this uh, model valve right here step open so we still are showing a draft. That, that, that's the normal draft. That's what that should be there, between 0, 1, and 2. Now, when this thing comes on, um, it will go up to 5, 5 and a half, 6. But um, in the meantime, what I'm going to do is maybe I'll do the video, but I want to get out of here. I'll do the video with the modification. Regardless of the fact you get the picture, um, you can see that we have a draft without this running. So it's excessive. Let me get this apart, and I'll get right back to you with the testing. So to touch base, I had a couple comments on a YouTube video. It's We didn't educate, or educate anybody. This boiler has an excessive draft, high draft that's pulling through here and what it does is it makes the border unsafe loses the efficiency by pulling the transfer heat standby heat off the cast iron up the chimney and it'll happen too if you have an electronic damper in this particular case the carbon monoxide was rising it rised up to three raised excuse me raised up to three four hundred plus and then it would come down when this was covered, okay, the carbon monoxide lessened because the air is being directed from the bottom. All we're doing is directing the air to flow from the bottom through the cast iron up through the chimney and the damper is going to control the draft and combustion air. I'll get right back to you. Okay, you can see I relatively in quick time Remove the draft, install a T. This T can, is good here, like, you know, at least 8, 10 inches above, not down low, because you can't bend the spill switches. So what this is going to do, is going to put this damper in here, fill controls, MG1, 7 inch. This is going to let the dilution air, the excess air, go above the, above the flame, above the burner. And it's going to stabilize the, uh, draft on the burner so it's not excessive and i can actually feel the air sucking right in there and uh that's in result of uh you can see i'm a good way that flame's just going right in there so uh, let me get this damper in we'll have some more footage of the testing Go from 
Okay, I got the damper fitted in. I have my test hole down here. As you can see, this is cool steel. The bore is not on. I'm going to be doing the spill switches here. Um, this thing is, uh, that's the natural atmospheric condition here where that's open. So when this border comes on, this sucker will go more. And um, now, as you can see here, this is the draft above the damper. Okay. So that's without it running. As you can see down here, I have this in below the damper. I'm measuring the air off above the the border. That's at a zero one. That's a stable condition. Should be zero, but it's excessive. Okay, so when this is off, the air, the draft, combustion air is not going to be uh, be going above the minus zero one. That's a normal uh, pressure, okay? Minus 0 0.1 water column to two. I mean, you can go two and a half, but anything above that, and you start to get the uh, high draft. Um, so this is minus 0 0.1, okay? You can see that. And I'm down here below the damper. Now, if I put this up here, the it's higher, slightly higher, because the air is going in here somewhat. So that's how you do a draft test. You don't measure the draft on an atmospheric uh, border um, through the draft hood below the dilution there. It gets measured above. I did this here to prove that uh, it's controlled with this damper. Um, force operation so this is a double acting now fuel controls if you're looking this I'm referring to you because I do quite a bit of these um, this doesn't look like it's perfectly round make sure you're rounding out your uh, metal but I'll get back here in a few minutes okay we have the uh, spool switches wired on oh, these bigger ones I got a little more play here, but so this jumper gets on the inner side and two go on the outside um, of the spill switch. And uh, make sure when you use these, this is for vertical flu. This bottom one's for the horizontal. They came shipped with the horizontal, so you have to switch it. But uh, I'm going to get my analyzer set up and we're going to test this and uh, bring this under control. Stabilize it. So you can see there we got a almost a minus two draft without it running. And, uh, okay, we're turning the border on. You got to raise the thermostat. Yeah. yeah raise it like six degrees higher than normally what you keep it because I'm going to test this for about 12 minutes all right set my timer for 12 minutes 12 minutes counting down okay so we got this border running you can see the highest it went to was 44 ppm prior to this it went up to over three or four hundred i think actually last time was what it's like almost 800 
uh, excuse me the initial test of this when it went on I have the readings on uh, file here I'm gonna print them out it was a uh, high so this sucker only went up to 44 ppm which is excellent it's been cold for two hours so this is a cold startup as you can see the uh, barometric damper has this under control the outlet side of the damper is at a 0 0.5 water column and climbing and I'll measure this over here with the draft on it actually the the analyzer and this but the draft on this side of this damper is stabilized to the proper pressure like a minus zero two so that's how high the draft was it's actually higher now because today it's colder here in Pittsburgh it's like five and a half six now our oxygen is stabilized we have one ppm Auctions at 9.3, which is not bad. Um, carbon dioxide is lowered to 6.61. This uh, bore was fluctuating between 175 uh, parts per million up to 400 at a steady state and fluctuating. Now it's stabilized. This uh, bore is operating at one part per million with an oxygen level of 9.2 and it's declining in the oxygen so let me put the door back and then we're going to do the test with these uh, spill switches this is my uh, smart app as you can see these are the readings transmitted by bluetooth i heard somebody mention that the uh, tesla 300 is no good I have this in a previous video. This uh, software's been updated. You download the app, you transfer this to your phone. You can uh, finish the test, send it to this uh, smart app, and email it directly from your phone, PDF to the customer or yourself. It's a good piece of machine. I uh, corrected this boiler, made it safe, and, and it's going to be more efficient, okay? guess when they shipped it in but we are now at a steady oxygen at 9.0 which is a good oxygen 8.9 1 ppm and you can see this is wide open man there's a lot of air in this place now if I would put a weight here to close this it would raise the oxygen So, for some particular reason, around this area in Pittsburgh, Western PA here in Pittsburgh, I haven't been at adding weights. It's not necessary because I guess it's the way the air and the gas is. So the draft is stable. Um, and you can see that thing about five and a half, six. We're at an 8.9 oxygen, one part per million. This is burning beautiful now for you smart Alex out there I think somebody re replied to the last video I had maybe I didn't explain it quite well and maybe I did it's quite simple there's an excess of draft here on this boiler system every house is different in building this occurs in water heaters too commercial residential atmospheric water heaters so due to the leakage in the air in this house, I call it an unknown phenomenon. I refer to it in my blog post. It's an unknown phenomenon. You can't see it. The air was causing this border to uh, high draft and uh, pull gas, flue gas up this chimney faster than it's necessary, which uh, makes it inefficient and unsafe. And uh, as far as any impingement damage I don't see much on this particular case but um, 
there was a lot of white powder which is from condensation so the high draft will definitely make it inefficient pulling all the uh, residual standby heat up the chimney and cooling off the boiler and uh, can high fire it and uh, cause impingement where the flame pulls off the burner and hits metal it's not supposed to be heated inefficient heating you know what I mean so if you don't quite understand that I suggest uh, you would register stop register yourself excuse me I'm not a philanthropist but I do the best I can register register yourself with the National Comfort Institute and get qualified for this because uh, I've been doing this for over 30 years since I was a kid and none of the people I work for knew this and I'd say out of every 10 borders that I've checked or get called to check vaguely I'd say two to three maybe four have this kind of a problem so this is uh, stabilized right now and as you can see on my smart app we're at an 8.7 auction two part per million to one this thing is fine-tuned and as you can see the damper is moving it's doing its job so throughout this house there's a window here that's sealed there's uh, no open windows there's actually a laundry chute so sometimes these act as another condom you can bring cool air down hot air rise and you don't have a proper combustion yet but this is closed up at the top every home is different in building it's the way the air movement is and leakage so we have this stabilized it's very good and that's at about a five you know five and a half to six as you can see this is actually increasing to six it's a high draft excessive stack effect so we got about uh, three more minutes four more minutes this is a new gas valve. I didn't have to adjust the regulator. Everything is uh, showing good readings. This is the Testo 300 second screen. A Testo 300 combustion analyzer. Goes up to 4,000 ppm. It, it has a safety shut off. So this is a pretty good analyzer. I have no problems. I sent it back for calibration and software update. It's uh, self-contained with a Rolodex. You had your customer name and address and uh, equipment model and serial number. So you have it for any potential uh, service calls or visits. You know what's there. So we're at a steady state now. It's been running for over three minutes you got an eight seven oxygen one part per million it's a good mix we have a complete combustion so when you're testing these boilers or furnaces or water heaters you don't put this probe in after it started up you have to do it on the startup and the same with the draft at the same time you do this at the draft and uh, some of the boilers have the draft box down here and they have the draft to it this was a draft so what we did according to the instructor we set this to the side and uh, the instructor of nci and we uh modified the original design i found out late in my career that the boiler manufacturers atmospheric boilers tested their boilers on a five foot tall chimney in the factory so there's no way that's considered to be um, field related there's no way there's a five foot chimney so I don't know why the federal government in this country and ANSI and all these people just have this written in a book that you can use it to uh, 
make the appliance safe, they should come with it, as far as I'm concerned. This uh, stabilizes your uh, combustion air and draft. This is a high draft, high, high. And you can see that on the uh, outlet side there, we got about a five to six, five and a half. It's actually at six now, five and a half, six. Colder it gets outside, the more draw you'll get. Another tip I recommend I find this out in, this year in October, especially on steam borders. You don't want to be servicing borders around Pittsburgh, Western PA. We have a different type of climate now compared to 40, 50 years ago. It gets a little bit uh, cooler early, mainly stays mild. You want to test borders around October, like the second week when it's anywhere between 40 to 50 degrees out because uh, the temperature outside can affect your draft and show a stable draft then when it gets colder it uh, becomes high so this is uh, how you conduct uh, a tune-up of a gas fired atmospheric boiler we're at uh, two parts ppm to one safe operation okay the timer's up so what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this and we're going to um did you shut the border off yeah no no I got it I'm still testing I'm talking to my phone my camera yeah, uh, yeah turn it back on because I want to test this with the draft uh, yeah and then we'll sh be done. So I'm I'm I'm, gonna, I'm talking to my camera. I'm gonna test this draft with my analyzer to see what I get down here. And then I'm gonna use the uh, draft gauge, okay? So these are a little bit off. This is showing you three, but when I put my draft gauge, because I'm more level in here, you want to get it down. So three isn't bad, but the analyzer, they're more uh, more tuned for a different uh, number reading. So what we're going to do is finish this test. I'm going to send this to my smart app. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the draft gauge down in there. So I can get the, uh, the reading I want. And, uh, now we're going to just test the. Uh, as you can see, I have my draft gauge, okay? Hanging. I stuck it down, the tube down, okay, to get into the air. So this is maintaining a minus two draft this is where you would test this over the fire okay uh, you shut the border off shut the border off yeah. shut it off okay I have to get my um, tube one in there. All right, that's great. It's the first time I've ever had that happen. All right, so in the meantime, this is Vince Marino Plumbing LLC in Pittsburgh. This is a, a video on correcting a high draft on a burning gas atmospheric vented border. Until the next adventure, ciao.